Hello everyone, Andrew here, and welcome to today's Game & Watch review, where we're going to be looking at Balloon Fight, the 57th ever Game & Watch release. So out of about 60 Game & Watches that exist out there, this one is pretty late game. It was released November 19th, 1986, and it is the first new widescreen model Game & Watch that we are going to be looking at. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're saying, Andrew, a couple days ago, we looked at um, Parachute, and that was a widescreen model. Well, this is new widescreen, and what exactly is different about that? According to the internet, not too much. Uh, it just kind of mentions that earlier widescreen models that were released were called original widescreen, and then when they made some Game & Watches that were widescreen later on, they grouped them as new widescreen Game & Watches. One thing that you can uh, definitely look at, though, to tell immediately which model you're looking at is this down here says Nintendo on new widescreen Game & Watches where on the original widescreen ones it actually just says widescreen which you'll notice if you go back and look at the parachute game and you'll, you'll of course see it uh, on other Game & Watches that we look at throughout the month but yeah it's just kind of a weird uh, thing going on there you might also think you know you can look up here and this time we actually don't have a game B rather than the alarm button being small like the ACL button it is now a proper sized button but that's not consistent for all new widescreen models, so you can't even just kind of, you know, uh, go by that. I also think we're probably going to test out the alarm in today's video, but I haven't shown off the Game & Watch's uh, alarm working yet. So if we have some time, which I don't <laughs> I don't know how long the gameplay is going to last for this one, it's pretty tricky. Uh, we'll probably have some time to look at the alarm. First thing we want to do though is set the time as I just put the batteries in. What's a good time today? You can also hold the buttons to go like super fast. Uh, it goes really fast like on this later, uh, you know, released Game & Watch, but on some of the earlier ones, even if you hold the button, it still feels like you're waiting quite some time. Uh, then we can press the time button and it should just, you know, do a little demonstration there while I read you some very important information. This game actually has a story and, you know, of course, Balloon Fight, it's kind of you know, has the same title as the NES game, which I'm sure many people know. As you can probably see from the demo here, this game definitely has some similarities to the Balloon Trip mode from Balloon Fight rather than the kind of more Joust style gameplay. But when it comes to story, you know, this game gives modern Nintendo games a run for their money in terms of lore and such. And this is courtesy of the Nintendo Fandom Wikipedia, so thank you very much. In the game, you control a character named Balloon Man, who is a member of the Sky Patrol. Prior to the start of the game, he battled and defeated the pirate boss, Orium Repus, which is actually Super Mario spelled backwards for some reason, uh, and put him and his henchmen all in jail. The boss managed to escape and free all of his henchmen, who tore the map to where Orium is, up into small pieces and spread them across the land in balloons. The balloons all floated up to Trip Sky, and now the Sky Patrol must find them all and gain the contents within so that they can recreate the map and find the boss to place him back in the federal prison. So like, whoa, whoa, it's a Game & Watch game. I wasn't expecting, you know, such background, such, you know, epic story and lore from the, uh, the Balloon Fight Game & Watch, but uh, I'm really looking forward to playing it. Uh, it's pretty tricky though, just kind of, you know, you can probably imagine that. Game & Watch, Balloon Fight. But yeah, here we go. I'm gonna try and hold this one a little closer. Uh, I would usually play with my index fingers, but you kind of really need a good grip for this one. So... Right, so, I pressed the time button, of course. So, what we need to do now is you press this button to fly upwards, just like you do in normal Balloon Fight, but you can also press left and right to get some height. Uh, but it's kind of tricky picking up the balloons and such because, you know, it's not a smooth movement. It's very, you know, kind of frame by frame. So sometimes understanding where you are in relation to the screen and such is quite difficult. There are also posts that you can stop on. So you can kind of, you know, use them to get your bearings back, figure out exactly where you are, which is kind of nice. And what we need to do is we need to collect 25 balloons and then a flashing post will appear, which if we land on, we can use to go to the next level. And you get bonus points, just like in the original balloon fight, if you never miss any balloons and get like a really good chain of 20 or so going, but uh, it's kind of, you know, uh, it's so hard to understand where you are. And as soon as you stop pressing the, the button on the right repeat, Repeatedly, uh, you really drop fast, so you really need to be careful you don't fall in that water because it's super easy to accidentally do that. Yeah, I'm just not very good at getting the balloons 
Yeah, you really, it's funny because, you know, the original NES balloon flight just has such smooth movement. And it feels so good to play, but this one, it's like, you don't always really know where you are because the screen's always flickering. So yeah, you really got to be careful. And this is only like the first stage. Of course, you know, dangerous stars and stuff are going to start being introduced in the later stages. So things don't get any easier. Oh, and that, that's another thing. Just like in the original balloon trip, you only get one life. So it's actually even, you know, spookier than you would think. So here's that flashing post. Maybe you gotta land on this one, maybe. There you go. So we're now at phase two. <laughs> and again, you know, one death and we're out. Uh, also, those stars across the top of the screen are just like decoration in the plastic. It's not something that's, you know, actually in the Game & Watch. Or rather, you know, it's not one of the cells that lights up or anything like that. Even when the Game & Watch is off, those appear. So yeah, like... Trying to navigate around these stars and understand exactly where you are at all times is really awkward. So we're going to want to go over this. And then somehow, like, over this. Cool, wow, this is actually going a little bit better than I thought. It would probably go. Wow. Yeah, having those posts to land on definitely helps the gameplay a little bit. Otherwise, it's, you know, it would feel really tough to constantly having to be pressed the button and stay in the air. But yeah, wow, this is actually not too bad. Although, uh, yeah, it's kind of tough to hold under the camera the whole time. It's probably the most difficult part of this, really. Is trying to make sure I keep it centered. You don't really think about it when you're just playing a normal video game. Like, how am I holding the controller and such? Uh, where is it? There, wow. Nope. So, from what I hear, there are 16 stages in total. And there are actually bosses after stages 8 and 16, if you can make it that far, on one life. Uh, I won't blame me if you can't. Where am I? Okay, so see, look at that. I didn't really understand where I was, so I'm like, I thought I was still one to the right of the post, but it, I was actually over top of the post. So then I pressed left, and I ended up going a little bit too far, and yeah, that one death, and again, just like Balloon Trip in the original NES Balloon Fight, you're done. So it's a super, super unforgiving game, which is a shame because I just hit 50 points too. He probably could have gone on to the next level, but I think you understand the point. What we want to look at now, though, is the alarm system. Now, what time did I set the clock to here? It looks like 6.29 um, a.m., that says. So you press the alarm button, and just like the clock, we can now set the alarm with this. So let's set it to 6.31 a.m. And it starts the uh, alarm at p.m., so we're going to have to make sure we loop all the way around there to 6.31. And now if I press the alarm button, you can see uh, in the top corner here, pressing the alarm button turns the alarm on and off. And when you see the little icon up there, it's on. So now that it's 6.29, we can just put that down for a minute. And when it's 6.31, the alarm should go off. So let's wait. And that is the alarm sounds. That is what would be waking you up in the morning if you use this as your alarm. And that will continue for a little bit or until you press either the time or alarm button. So there you go. And then the icon will still be there. So the alarm will once again go off when it hits 631 the next day. But if you press that alarm button, that icon disappears and the alarm is now off. So there you go. That is a demonstration of the alarm feature, which the very first Game & Watch we looked at this month, uh, Fire did not have, although in all series after the Silver series, uh, there was an alarm function. But there, that's probably something you know most people haven't seen in operation. And all around, I think that balloon fight is a cool game. I think it has a really nice color to it. And just overall, I mean, Balloon Trip is always a fun thing to play on the NES. So them trying to convert that into a Game & Watch is a very interesting experiment. Unfortunately, because of the flicker of the cells and how it's not, you know, smoothly animated, uh, it's kind of tricky to play. But overall, I think definitely worth a play at some point if you can. I don't think it was ever included in any Game & Watch gallery game, so, you know, it's pretty obscure. But... That's my thoughts on it. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and hope you'll join me tomorrow for another Game & Watch review. So thanks and hope to see you then.